You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Millions of developers use Docker to build, share, and run applications with an integrated, reliable, and secure workflow that accelerates app delivery from code to the cloud. See how at docker.com. Insight Partners is an investor in Docker and TNS. Hey everyone, DockerCon LA, the first event that is not virtual in a few years. And I'm lucky to be here with Ivan Pedrasas, who is a principal engineer at Docker. Hi, Ivan. Hi, how are you? When I first started covering Docker in 2014, one of the things I always remembered was Solomon talking about that experience Excellent. and how important the experience really is. And he, he looked at it from a very visionary perspective, I thought, where he talked about not just programming software, but programming the internet, which uh, I really enjoy hearing because it gave me a perspective on where Docker was going and how its technology really could apply to that philosophy. Now, I'm curious today where you are with that philosophy because we're going to talk about Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is known to be very complicated for developers. So I'm just wondering how you view it now, how you view Docker, and how you view that intersection. Yeah, that's a good question. There's, there's no denying, Kubernetes is very complex. Developers struggle a lot with Kubernetes, right? And the principle of Docker was UX. It was simplifying the user experience. And today we announced Docker Debug. And Docker Debug follows this, this philosophy of, let's try to simplify the work of a developer. Right? It's about making life easier for developers. Making life easier for developers. But de debugging a container is not easy to do. It, it mean, is not, yeah. <laughs> how do you get into, I mean, that gets into, I mean, how do you do that? I mean, because you're talking about multiple layers inside of a container. That, that's the thing, right? It's like, it's in the same way that before Docker, we had to do all these bits and bobs, building a VM and deploying the application. Debugging, nobody wants to debug a container. What you want to debug is your application. So what we're trying to do is, what happens if we remove all these layers, make them invisible, so you can focus on debugging your application? And that is what Docker Debug does today. And you can do it locally and remotely and soon, soon in Kubernetes as well. And it's about the user experience. So I get this imagery in my mind of, instead of a Docker with multiple layers, it's almost like a, a zone, almost. Like it's more like a, I don't know, like a skyscraper with no floors on it, right? Where then you can see any, so if you look at it from an x-ray perspective, you can see all these different types of bugs and issues. But that's just my mind kind of racing. What is it really? Well, it, it's exactly that. You have all these dependencies and constraints that are being piling up. And when we talk about shifting left, I like, I come from, from Kubernetes and security. Like we talk about shifting life. What we're doing is pushing all the complexity to developers. So all of a sudden we have all these developers have to deal with a lot of concerns. And then, then you can ask them, what, what do you think is your, your role? When you're doing a development, when you're, de when you're deploying an application, when you're de developing an application, sorry. When you're developing an application, what do you think that are the things that you have to do? And then they will come up with three or four or five things that they think is like, write my code and test my code and, and build it and package it and deploy it. But in reality, when you have to do it in production, it's very different. You have all the compliance, all the security, you have all the networking, all, all the bits and bobs that usually developers don't see that much. And when they are exposed to Kubernetes, basically is the Kubernetes API exposes all these concerns to them and they feel very uncomfortable with that. But like, let, let me give you an example. Let's take WordPress, for example, right? WordPress, we have the front end, we have the back end, the database. How many attributes do you think that you need that you can use to configure WordPress, the application? Random number? I have no idea. Okay, 50, more or less 50. How many attributes do you have 
when you want to deploy WordPress using Helm in Kubernetes? Double that. 300, it's five times more. And they're like, configuring my application requires $50. Deploying my application requires 300. It's 300. Like, it's it's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Right, and it's like, why is why is it so different? Why it that's three hundred containers. Sorry. That's three hundred. What exactly? Three hundred like dollars. Like if 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 the price that you have to pay for WordPress to convert it is fifty dollars yeah. to deploy it, it's three hundred dollars. Oh, I see. Right? I see. It's it's the the complexity of Kubernetes is very big compared to the complexity of an application, because Kubernetes deals with a lot of concerns. We have defaults, but at some point, if a developer is exposed to this, and, and even just going through the Helm chart, there are a lot of attributes, there are a lot of things that they don't know where it is, right? And, and all this creates cognitive load that makes developers wary, it's like, I don't want to touch it, I don't understand it, right? And, and so what we're trying to do is to apply this principle of, let's try to simplify it. And like, you get Compose, and you can deploy WordPress in Compose, there's like 20 lines of code, right? Like, how, how, how is it so different? How we can go from Compose being very simple, developers really like Compose for simplicity, to Kubernetes something very complicated. Right? And then it's usually what happens is like, there's two different people who are interested in this. Like what we want to do when we deploy to, to Kubernetes is to build a system that is high scalable and automated and blah, blah, blah. But when we're building the application, we're trying to find something like product market fit, something that provides value, right? Just two different concerns that with the shifting left ends up in the hands of developers. I can tell you something we do in Docker Labs. It's a, it's a project, it's super early, but it's called tape. Like a tape, like you use, yeah. the idea is basically you have all these artifacts that you need to deploy an application, like all the Helm templates and the Docker images and all the confusion that you need. And what we do with tape is create one single artifact. It's self-contained to deploy that you just need to do one command, it's one box, all your toys are there. You want to put this application in, in your cluster, you just need this artifact, only one. But it's, again. So is that how it works? How, how does it work for the developer? For what happens with developers is that they don't have to worry anymore about all these concerns because what we do is to package all these bits and deploy it. The developer should focus on building the application not how to package and transform the application to deploy in a cluster, right? Like when you want to do it, it's usually not the developer's concern to know how to configure Postgres in a HA. So you're trying to basically standardize the configuration to some extent. So there's, there's something called OCM, the Open Component Model, that, that companies like SAP and, and VMware are behind trying to define the relationship between all the different artifacts, all the YAML files, all the containers. And, but that's a logical representation. What tape does is to get this logical representation and package it. So when you want to deploy the application, you have one thing. Similar to what I said earlier about the Docker file. The Docker file was simplification of all the scripts that we have with Ansible or, or Chef or Puppet to deploy applications. Right? Like Solomon comes with these ideas like, Docker build, Docker run, change the industry forever. Right. Right? So it's, it's understanding that we have to be able to think ahead and say like, what if we could just ignore what you said about the building with all these empty floors, what if we can remove all these floors? We don't need them. Right? It's, it, and it's, it's this is the idea. Why do you need to do all these things? Right? And it's like, what if you don't have to do it? What has to happen for you not having to do this? So does a container need layers? The container has all the layers, but what we do is you to- You still need them. Yes, but what we have now is an OCI artifact that contains all the things, files, images, and, and, the, and the images basically contains with all the layers, right? So we aggregate everything. So you can, to simplify the SDLC, like, like the life cycle of the application creating the release gets much, much easier because you have to deal with one thing, right? Instead of all the many that can be configured in many different ways, right? So tell, take me through this story up to now and the complexity for the developer. I think you've talked about it a little bit here, but 
but in particular, what is that complexity that they face right now when they're trying to debug? Are they, they have to go through each layer, essentially? So yeah, that, that is the example. Like We have a talk tomorrow that basically covers this, this, this um, structure. Like You want to de debug an application, you need to know how the application works. Right. You want to de debug an application in a container, you need to understand how the application works and how the application has been added in the container. If you have a slim container, which is the application dependencies only, you cannot debug it because your tools are not there. So we need to have a slim containers, like distroless containers, just the application and dependencies. From the security point of view, that is great. But we reduce the blast radius, like the, the surface attack is much smaller. However, debugging these, these images get really hard. Right? So Docker debug is adding something that allows you to use all these, all these um, slim containers, all these distroless applications the way that you will do it in your machine. So tell me then how that then relates to Kubernetes. And I mean, debugging is something that you have to do with any application, archi application architecture. Yeah. But how does this make it relevant to, to Docker and, its, yeah, and Kubernetes? Well, the reality is that at Docker, we, we love Kubernetes. We work very closely with Kubernetes, yeah. right? And it's something that we're trying to understand how we can help developers to deal with the complexity of Kubernetes. And it, it, it gets very hard, like debugging in Kubernetes. We use kubectl underneath to debug Kubernetes. Like when you have a pod, it's not that we just create something magic. It's like we go the same route, but, but the issue of debugging using kubectl for example, is it's very hard. Yeah. You need you need to know a lot. That is the bit that okay. Let's try to put proper UX on top to simplify the process. So you don't really need to know all these things when you want to debug a container in 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 a cluster. Right? It's always the same idea. Try to simplify, make your life easy. What can we do to remove the friction? So you're removing the friction, but what about it? You know, a lot of the, about Kubernetes is is about the operations themselves, right? Like the management. I guess this is the first step with the developers building applications that are less buggy, perhaps, and that makes operations life easier. And what happens is that what what we do is to remove the complexity of the all the operation concerns are removed from the developer point of view. They will have to build and deploy the application in, in Kubernetes. Now, it's equivalent to run it in, in your local machine. Right? Like for the operations are the same. All the SRE, all the platform engineers, they keep working the same way. What we do is to help them with this, with this friction that developers don't know, don't understand Kubernetes, and platform engineers expect certain degree of quality when people send the artifacts into the cluster. Ah. Right? So it's like it's, it's this conversation we have between the, these two teams, like, okay, you're going to struggle to convince them to do the things that you want them to do. Right? So like, okay, what if Docker comes around and help you with this communication? I think uh, I'm keep thinking of test containers. It's, it's, a, it's a different approach. Test containers are different, but it, it, it's exactly the same concern. Like, what we want to do is to go fast, and test containers allows you to go very fast. Right? Like, what do I need? I need to have this this database. I need to have this API. Like, it's about all the all the sequence that has to happen, all the process we have to happen to in order to say, this is the code that I want to put in production. Right? Test containers help you to go faster. Yeah. By abstracting bits of complexity that developers should not have to deal with in day to day, right? So what's next? Next is, is, is the journey to try to harmonize the life of all the people who intervene in the SDLC, developers, create, create applications, operations, platform engineers, run systems, how we can make people 
comfortable and happier. And it's about understanding how we can simplify the, the life of developers, right? It's like we, Docker, decided to step back from, from production and focus on, on helping developers, right? Like Kubernetes is a system to run production workloads, right? Like we understand that some developers want to know Kubernetes. We're trying to help them as well. Like Docker Desktop runs turns Kubernetes. Like we're working on making that integration nicer and easier, faster. Right? And it's always them, how we can help developers to focus on what they want. Removing the complexity from Kubernetes or from debug or from CI. So that's your message basically to developers. We want to help you move faster. Totally, yes. The idea is we're here to help you to go fast. There are a lot of things that developers have to do today that they don't really want to do it. Like security is the best example. Right? When I was in control plane, we were exposed to all these people that had to do things that they didn't want to do. And many developers were like, well, I don't care about all these things. I just want to write my code. Yeah. Right? And like, okay, you, you can spend hours trying to convince them. You can hire new people or you can remove this layer, which is something that we're doing with the Scout. With the Scout, we're trying to help developers. Like, you have to deal with all these security concerns. So how we can help you? It's about automating all the, all the bits that we think that can be automated, remove all the noise, and giving you the space for you to think and focus on what is important. And so Docker Debug is an example of that path. That pattern, yes, yes, totally, absolutely. Ivan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.